Now, as much as I love a launcher, I do also really enjoy a nice, clean, tidy stock bit of Android action on my smartphone too. It's just an uncluttered, silky smooth, highly enjoyable experience. Well, as long as the hardware isn't a big bag of crap. And if you fancy yourself a fresh new smartphone uncluttered with heavy, clunky launchers, well, here's my pick of the very best stock Android smartphones you can buy right now in summer 2021, right here in the UK. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now your first choice when it comes to stock Android smartphones should always be Google's very own Pixel branded smartphones and in 2021 you've got a choice of three, the Pixel 4a, the Pixel 4a 5G and the Billy Big Bollocks Pixel 5 flagship. The Pixel 4a is the most budget friendly of the bunch at just 350 quid. You can upgrade to the 5G model for 500 pounds while the flagship Pixel 5 comes in at a tidy 600 quid. And the good news is that no matter your choice of Pixel smartphone, you're guaranteed to be getting one of the very best smartphone cameras that money can buy. Most people should be perfectly happy with the Pixel 4a, which boasts the same brilliant primary camera sensor as its siblings, so you can basically point and shoot and get great photos any time of day. You're only really missing out on the ultra wide angle lens with this cheaper phone, which is no big whoop. And Google has thankfully kicked the annoying trend of obnoxiously oversized smartphones square in the crotch because the Google Pixel 4a is a pocket pleasing 5.8 inches. So it's a joy to use one handed even with fairly stubby fingers like mine and it'll fit into pretty much any bag or pocket going. Packed into that dinky plastic frame is the Snapdragon 730G which handles everything including gaming without a grumble. The OLED screen is a stunner and yeah it is quite small but I'll still happily watch a whole flick on this thing. And as this is a Google smartphone, you've naturally got a lovely clean stock version of Android with the guaranteed timely updates for the next couple of years for a bit of added peace of mind. And most of the other smartphone features you'd hope for and expect at this sort of price point are present and correct. So for instance, you've got NFC for your Google Pay shenanigans. You've got a headphone jack if you want to plug in and enjoy some really crisp, high quality tunes. But unfortunately, the Pixel 4a doesn't include micro SD memory card expandability for the storage. Now gamers and anyone who wants some proper future proof and may be swayed by the Pixel 4a 5G or the Pixel 5, which rock the more powerful Snapdragon 765G chipset instead. And while all three Pixels pack a gorgeous Full HD Plus OLED screen, only the Pixel 5 serves up a buttery 90Hz refresh rate, which makes scrolling through apps and menus feel crazy smooth. That flagship also boasts wireless charging support, plus a proper bit of water resistance. But it's not all good news sadly here on the Pixel 5, because it is the only one of Google's 2021 trio that skips out on the headphone jack. Buggeration. But anyway, I've re-reviewed all of the Pixel smartphones right now in 2021 to see if they still hold up well, and spoiler alert, they basically do. I've also done a full side-by-side -side comparison of the trio as well to see exactly what the differences are between them, so if you are tempted, go check those out. Now, a strong alternative to those Pixel phones is the Nokia 8.3, otherwise known as the James Bond phone because Daniel Craig apparently uses it in No Time to Die. Although by the time the film actually finally bloody comes out, he'll probably have upgraded it to a Nokia 8.3. This 6.8 inch beast is a proper pocket filler and weighs a meaty 220 grams, so at least if Mr. Bond runs out of bullets, he can just hoy this thing at the baddies and put their lights right out. Good news then that the aluminium frame is tough as nails and the back end is coated in Gorilla Glass. The Nokia 8.35 g is guaranteed an upgrade to Android 12 when that launches later in 2021. Hopefully it should be a fairly timely update. And you're also guaranteed another couple of years of security updates on top for added peace of mind. And as always with Nokia branded smartphones, it is a lovely gorgeous stock version of Android on there as well. The only real tinkering by HMD Global has been the addition of Face Unlock to back up the otherwise dependable edge mounted fingerprint sensor. And that mighty 6.81 inch pure display panel is built for entertainment, not just because it's almost the size of a cinema screen, it is just IPS tech, sadly not OLED like many of the Nokia 8.3's mid-range rivals, but the colours are reasonably poppy, it's nice and bright and that Full HD Plus resolution helps to keep visuals sharp. You also have an always on HDR feature which can dynamically enhance contrasting colours when you're watching SDR video, and fair play this does work a charm. And if you want to carry around a lot of movies, music, yada yada, well you can boost the onboard storage with a bit of micro SD memory card action. The Snapdragon 765G chipset means you can blaze through pretty much any game out there with silky smooth frame rates, while the 4500mAh battery will happily keep you going all day, even with plenty of screen on time. 
And as usual, manufacturer HMD Global teamed up with those clever optics buds at Zeiss for the Nokia 8.3's camera tech, and the results are pretty bloody good. I've done a full Nokia 8.3 camera review, so go check that out for all you need to know. And I've also fully reviewed this handset, just like the Pixel blows as well, so again, go check that out for more in-depth look at all the specs, features, and other bits. Now, alternatively, if your budget is a bit on the light side, well, you might want to check out the Nokia 5.4 instead. It'll cost you just 150 quid, and you still get that enjoyable, slick, stock Android experience, and it's a fun little everyday blower. This 6.4-inch smartphone suffers from standard Nokia tropes like the fat lip, harboring some needless branding, plus that always pointless assistant button. But this Dusk model is rather fetching in a moody, emo kind of way. Thankfully, the Nokia 5.4 has now been updated to Android 11, and you've got a good bit of Android 12 action to look forward to later in 2021, or possibly early 2022, depending on just how quickly Nokia gets its skates on with that one. Plus, you've got three years of security updates to look forward to as well, which is rather reassuring. You've got NFC support here in the UK and dual SIM support, plus a separate micro SD slot to expand the storage. Meanwhile, that IPS screen is a mere 720p panel, but it's fine for streaming YouTube or browsing the old internet. Power and Proceedings is the Snapdragon 662 chipset again, and once again, this is fine for gaming on the go. While the 4000 mAh battery is near impossible to drain in a single day, unless you really punish this thing. And slap there, on the back end of the Nokia 5.4, you've got a 48 megapixel primary camera sensor. This proves absolutely fine for shoes in every day photos, although the video quality was a bit of a mess, lots of focal pop and other issues. So if you want a smartphone to shoot lots of home movies of the kiddie winks or whatever, I would definitely say look elsewhere. Now one possible alternative also from Nokia is the Nokia G20, which I haven't unfortunately had the chance to test out yet, but at 135 quid, it does sound like a fairly solid budget offering. The Nokia G20 sports a 6.517 inch display. Yeah, that's right, 6.517 inches precisely. That's Nokia going into full on teenage lad measuring his thingy mode right there. It's a 720p panel, not full HD sadly, and the G20 is powered by a MediaTek Helio G35 chipset, which seems to be all right for simple everyday use. The Nokia G20's 5050 mAh battery is a match for most budget rivals, while the quad lens rear camera is headlined by a 48 megapixel main sensor with a simple 8 megapixel selfie cam up front. And Nokia has also just launched a fresh new super tough stock Android smartphone ready for 2021, catchily titled the XR20. This £399 beefcake sports a 3D nano textured rear end with the drop resistant Gorilla Glass Victor screen up front. It's past military standard 810H testing, so it can survive falls of almost 2 metres as well as extreme temperatures and humidity, while the IP68 water resistance means you can chuck it in a pool just for a bit of a laugh. Once again, you have that stock Android experience with the only real tinkering being the face and lock support to back up the fingerprint sensor. And incredibly, HMD Global is not just offering three years of OS updates with the XR20, you've also guaranteed four full years of security updates, plus you get an extended warranty in parts of Europe. Oh, and for every XR20 sold, HMD Global will also plant 50 trees. So if you like trees, then excellent. You've got expandable storage, a 6.67 inch Full HD Plus display, a 4630 milliamp battery with wireless charging support quite rare at this price, another Zeiss branded camera as well, although performance is quite limited thanks to the Snapdragon 480 chipset running the show. And if the sound of all that has really buttered your spuds, well you can check out my in-depth Nokia XR20 unboxing and tour right here on Techspert. Now, if one of your biggest problems in life is that your bags, pockets or whatever are overflowing with great big wadges of lovely cash and you want to get rid of a load of it, well, definitely go check out Motorola's snazzy bendy blower, the Motorola Razr 5G. This all new reimagining of the classic flip phone sports a 6.2 inch OLED screen which can fold in half with zero creasing. And when it's all closed up, the motor is a 5G is ridiculously teeny so you can shove it anywhere you like, most bodily orifices included but not medically sanctioned. And with the Teensy secondary display, you can check your notifications and even use apps without having to unfurl this clever wee chappy. Motorola first attempted a Razer reboot in 2019 and it was a bit of a mixed bag to say the least. So Motorola went back to the drawing board and upgraded the specs for this fresher 5G model. So now you get a more capable Snapdragon 765 chipset backed by 8 gigs of RAM and you've also got an upgraded 48 megapixel primary camera. Battery life is still pretty pants, however, definitely the worst in this roundup, so it is light use only. Plus, yeah, the screen has that annoying notch that's not quite as bad as the iPhones, but it's still pretty rubbish. 
And again, if your stacks aren't quite fat enough to reach up to the Motorola Razr 5G, perfectly understandable, of course, because it ain't exactly cheap, well, maybe check out the far more affordable Moto G30 instead, which comes in at under 200 quid. As far as looks go, the Moto G30 sure ain't anything special. Like most budget phones, this is another plastic blower offering little in the way of frills or flare, although it is at least splash resistant if you have yourself a bit of an accident. And what you get here is a very lovable stock Android experience, which has been bolstered by a shed load of bonus Motorola features, stuff that we all know and love, like that excellent karate chop torch effort and lots of gesture controls as well. The 6.5 inch IPS screen is unfortunately only a 720p res effort, so it's not exactly supremely crisp, but those visuals are reasonably punchy and you've got a 90 hz refresh, so everything looks buttery smooth. The Snapdragon 662 chipset can handle fast-paced games like Call of Duty Mobile, and Motorola's dedicated game and mode can manage resources out of sight and block pesky notifications from buggering up your concentration. And that 5000 milliamp battery means the Moto G30 will keep on going all day long, even with plenty of screen on time, no matter what you're up to, basically. And also, the camera tech is very respectable for this price point. That 64 megapixel primary sensor does typically struggle in strong or low light, but it can otherwise snap some very decent looking pics of the fam, although the video mode does top off at full HD resolution. And all of the other features that you'd really hope would be on board the Moto G30, but you wouldn't necessarily expect at this sort of price point, are present and correct. So you've got NFC for your contactless payments, you've got a good bit of headphone jack action, and you've got micro SD expandability, so you can boost that storage when needed. So all in all, a couple of little issues aside, like the 720p display, this is a very tasty package for a budget-friendly price. Alternatively, there's always the Moto G50, which strips back some of the specs compared with the G30, but it does add 5G support as a form of compensation. And I've still got a lot of love for slightly older Motorola handsets as well, like the Moto G9 Plus, still a great bit of kit that is. But just bear in mind that when it comes to Motorola smartphones, they're not quite as timely on the update front compared with the likes of the Nokias and of course the Google Pixels. So anyway, that's my pick of the very best stock Android smartphones you can grab yourself right now in summer 2021. Did I miss out your own personal favourites? Well, definitely make sure you call me a massive wang in the comments below and clue me in as to your own personal preferences. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a lovely bloody rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you!